I'ma take time with all my rhymes Roll up flow like butterflies Feel alive when I just die We coming through so look alive Take no time to roll that fire Woke up late, I got too hot There's no debate, I am that guy Need my space on homicide, oh all right, so on today's episode, we're going to talk about branding and how it helps you stand out. Branding is how others remember you. Uh, if you work on your brand as a content creator, as an artist, you know, as anyone, you know, business wise, anything, if you work on your brand, you're establishing a connection with your audience, consumers, you're building credibility, and it also opens you up to expansion to be able to introduce new products and services and enter new markets and brand expansions and things of that sort. So I wanted to ask you, what is the importance of branding? I'm just starting out with that. Brandon, to me, is kind of like the image you associate with somebody. Like when I think of Tyler, I think of our future. Mac Miller is most dope. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. the, you know, you have a person and you have the image. You know, I feel like the person is reflected through your art, through what you do naturally. And mm -hmm. your brand is kind of your image, what you portray, what you want to push forward, what you want mm -hmm. to represent you. My brand is nomadic. One of my old friends was having a conversation, trying to figure out, like, what necessarily defines our music. We always traveled to record, you know. There was never a time where it was like we were just in one spot recording. Well, there was a time where we didn't have a single location to record in. Like, we mm -hmm. didn't have an in-house studio. We didn't know any engineers that were, like, licensed you know what I mean? Had their own spot and worked with other artists. So Nomadic was the vibe. Like we was just moving around. We had some cabins in Wisconsin. I've been in Minnesota, recorded. I recorded in Florida. I recorded in Arizona. My friends all split up when we went to college. So a lot of the people that I made music with or who were interested in that, they just lived in different states, different cities. Um, the vibe for Nomadic for us was just that. Like that musical spirit was moving around. It was Nomadic. It didn't really have no roots, no home. Now it's a little bit different. You know, now we got roots. I got a dedicated space now. But back in the mm -hmm. day when I first started, like, the vibe was nomadic. That was our brand. So just creativity on the go, always chasing new horizons. And I think that's super important for an artist to have a culture behind it. The point is to bring people together. So if people don't see an avenue to support you or they can't associate what you do with, you know, a visual or a certain sound, like, it don't got to be visual, I guess. I guess it depends if you are a visual artist or mm -hmm. a musical artist. It's different. But, yeah, that's basically... Just something to, something to associate you with. Like, that's important as hell. What inspired you to start a clothing business, and how did you get started? I draw inspiration from my peers mostly. Like, some of my homies, like, one of my homies, his name, uh, his artist named Blayboy. He made this, it's like a Nike pullover, quarter zip, and it's a windbreaker. Way back in the day, he just ironed on some hearts on that bitch, and he was selling it for $20. Bro, I bought that shit, like, immediately. <laughs> soon, I bought that shit, like, within the week, like, when I seen it. It was just tough. It's, it was a vintage little Nike. I wish I had it on me. No, it's old now, but it's definitely shit like that that inspired me. Like, bro, made this at the crib, just off top, off dome. Like, it's something real simple, but I'm not going to lie. In my brain, it was like, damn near February coming up. That shit looked drippy. Like, it was navy blue with the hearts on it. Like, mm -hmm. lover boy feeling, you know? I, like, that's cool as hell. Man, my fault. <laughs> my, I cut my finger. I just felt some blood. I'm, what the fuck? Oh, wow. But... <laughs> but but no, I, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What inspired me to make clothes is basically um, also some art, other artists that I follow. Like, uh, I think I recently talked about Saba on one of these podcasts. You know, he started as a shoe model. You know, that's kind of different from clothing. But um, that was an avenue for him to fund his dream. So it's like, for me, I want something that's tangible, something that people can see that it will directly support me. You know what I'm saying? Because there, mm -hmm. there are people who ask me, like, where do I stream your music? Like, how do I help you out? Like, I love your visions. I love your attitude. Like, I love your energy. But people don't know where to direct that positivity, that constructiveness. Like, it's super easy to go tap a link and buy a $20 t-shirt. That $20, you know, two t-shirts, like, that's a, a wave lease, you know? Mm -hmm. Two t-shirts, me selling that might be a studio session. So it's like, that's, that's really a direct correlation to help support me and help associate what I do in music with something that you can visually see, something you can physically connect with. Coming out with that brand to, you know, establish who you are. And it's also a direct way for people to support you. Yeah. Looking at your brand, looking at the clothing that you guys are coming out with, it's unique, it's different. Thank you. And it definitely represents you guys and what you're doing. Yeah. And me, as a consumer, I want to buy your product because it's raw as hell. The <laughs> designs you. are raw as hell. It's different. Right. Second of all, I'm supporting you in your movement. I'm a loyal customer to your brand. I'm a loyal supporter to your music. I'm yeah. a loyal supporter to you, you as a person. So you have built up your brand locally, and now it's to the point where you have people who just want to support you just because, you know what I mean, of who you are. There are, like, a handful of people in Illinois, like a good culture of people that 
like I really am thankful for that have been pushing me to get to the point where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Where it's like now my resources are together. Now it's just like a click of a button and everything could change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least like the trajectory of everything I'm doing, like mm -hmm. definitely is a, a high possibility. This is the starting point for me. So like, I don't want to put the cart before the horse. Like when I first had started getting these ideas, like obviously I wasn't where I am now. I didn't have the music and the content that I have now. I didn't have the confidence or the validation as an artist that I did that I did have now. I also couldn't fucking draw when I first started. So it's like the fact that I am here where I am now, again, it's kind of like, it's a good progression that I've seen. I think that the brand is important because it kind of like puts everything in perspective. It's like damn near the last piece of the puzzle. Uh, yeah, the puzzle, because it's like, I've been had a unique sound. Like, I've been, like, making weird-ass music that people don't generally make or generally, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got a weird subgenre that I'm, I'm squeezing my way into, but now it's like that I have the visual, like, representation of what that genre means to me, especially because it's organic, like, it came from, like, pen to the paper. So it's like, now my shit is pen to the paper to... The, my, the shit that on my chest, on my back, like, it's crazy to see that shit as the creator. And it's crazy to see people resonate with that. Like, I had a photo shoot, like, a few weeks ago. And that's when I really, really realized, like, I'm damn near starting a culture. This is a little bit more than just an idea now. For the longest time, it was hard for me to actualize, like, what I'm doing outside of a hobby. Uh -huh. But then, like, shit, you link up with 10, 20 people and... They all have the same constructive vision and everyone's wearing the shit that you made. Like, that's, I'm not going to lie, that shit damn near made me want to cry. Like, my team really helped me out and the people who I linked up with, like, some of those people I met literally that day. And, like, my first photo shoot, like, it went so smooth because of the artistry that people presented. Like, even if they weren't an artist, just, like, the confidence that they had in themselves that they could contribute to an artistic situation. Like, yeah, you can really fit into any niche that you can put your mind to like nowadays like if you're beautiful that's a talent <laughs> like seriously like a lot of people like, look good and that's their entire thing like it's it's weird as fuck honest to god objectively looking at it it's weird as fuck <laughs> but it's pretty privileged you know what i'm saying like everyone has their niche into it like if you were just even if you're just again just a pretty person like i feel like me personally for my objective like i have a clothing brand you want to look different you want you want something to bring to the table i feel like my shit will definitely bring something interesting to the table. People are going to look at you and be like, whoa, like, what's that on your chest? And then the crazy part is, is that, like, I love to draw. I love artists. Like, I love my design team. Mm -hmm. But my passion is in music. So it's like my avenue of this is actually just, like, is, I mean, it's the same for music, but it's a little bit different. It's like mm -hmm. this is the attention getter. Like, my brand is kind of like the over-encompassing goal, the over-encompassing intentions. Like, you know, I want to be free. I want to be able to travel. I, I want to be able to like, you know, dig up my roots and replant them somewhere. Like the nomadic spirit is like, honestly, like the damn near, I don't want to I don't want to say nothing too crazy, but damn near, that's like kind of what the American dream is, like uprooting yourself, going from yeah. one place, taking your culture, your peoples and, you know, finding some place that's yeah. fresh. Everybody wants to travel, you know, mm -hmm. especially our age. Like you ask most shit. I was going to say women, but damn near anybody like what's your hobbies? People say traveling, vacation. Like I like learning new shit. I like seeing new things. And it's like, yeah, like that's everybody ideally wants to be that. Yeah. You know, and I, so I feel like my brand resonates with that because when we were starting up, like when, when all my team was starting up, like we dead ass just wanted to travel. Like making music was just like the hobby that we had. Like what we was doing is like, bro, I'm taking a flight to AZ link up with my, my boy. He, he hoop out there. So it's like, bro, we going out there. We going to turn up. We going to chill out. We going to work out. But like also... Our shit was like, all right, we're going to make a few songs, too, before we dip. Like, we have to B&B, like, let's try to make three, four songs before we dip to B&B because, it's, you know, we might as fucking well. Yeah, that's just basically the nomadic spirit. Like, that's basically my brand and what it encompasses and what I'm trying to portray. You've showed me a lot of unique designs that, sure. you know, you have been creating. So how would you describe your design aesthetic and style? Or what does your clothing brand have that mm -hmm. other brands do not have? Shit, man. I'm, I'm going to just say this right now. Like, the design team is not just me. Like, shout out Hope Jasmine. Shout out Tyler Saxby. Like, I just spit y'all full government out there on bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, my team is, and oh, yeah, and Mela, too. I know you know Mela. Um, bro, like, the motherfuckers be designing shit. Like, when I tell you mm -hmm. that it's hard to find, like, a group of people who can kind of bounce off of each other, like, that's really fucking hard. I've been blessed meeting people who are genuinely, like, I'm just going to say it's flat out just more talented than I am. <laughs> like, in just certain aspects, for sure. Like, I'll link up with my friend, like, Hope. Like I just said, um, you're going to see her signature mm -hmm. in different places on my shit. I just asked her, like, yo, can you show me your art, blah, blah, blah. Like, we went to high school together, and she used to always draw, like, between like our breaks and stuff and between like our extracurriculars and all that yeah and i asked her like as an adult like after high school like you still draw blah 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 like can i see some of your drawings and that's when it really like clicked with me because me and hope are locked in like we've always been locked in but like 
the shit that she draws is so visually appealing. And I feel like what I needed was an avenue of, you know, something that would draw people in visually. And what she needed was an avenue for her art to be seen. So it was like I was saying earlier, beautiful people provide a great canvas. You know, I have the resources and everything. I've taken the time to research like all the boring shit that no one cares about. You know, I have the ADHD brain to juggle all that shit. And um, Hope had the pure content to just make. Now I have other people like, again, like my homie Sax and Mela, like they're both like Mela draws on like tablets. She's super versed in that. And like Sax, like he's super, super good with like Photoshop and digital shit like that. In addition to a whole wide, like Sax is like a, a fucking, like an X factor. Like the shit that bro brings to the table was just like, it makes shit so easy sometimes. And like helping with the first design, helping out with that was like kind of like the foundation for everything. Like bro done made, you know what I'm saying? The overall logo, like he done heard the ideas and seen my sketches and like the fact that we bounced back, back and forth between each other is just like, you know, you kind of need like-minded people like that. Like, it's not easy to do shit by yourself. We also talked about that before. There's yeah. certain limits to it. For me, like, my limitation was my drawing ability. So it's like, I improved on that and improved on like my typography. I think that's what it's called, like not typing, but you know, drawing words and shit, basically. I've always had good handwriting. So I just improved on that as like a drawing style and like kind of became more like a graffiti type thing. Like I, I like drawing with pens a lot, but once that translates to a computer, like Sax's idea was, you know, turn that shit to, a gra to graffiti. And like, I really, really fucking resonate with that because like, you know, growing up in the city, like there's a lot of graffiti. There's a lot of like really, really cool detailed graffiti too. So, you know, like sometimes maybe, you know, I might pick up a can, a spray can or something and do some shit. But I feel like what really helped me get the designs and the content wasn't just me. Like the ideas, even the name wasn't just me. Like I had a friend, Marby. Again, we, we made music. We used to make music together all the time. And like we were talking about like what defines the spirit of the music that we make. They just said nomads. Like we move around like we nomads. We don't have like a place like neither here nor there. Like we have homes, but it's like we rarely in them. You know, blessed. You know, blessed to actually have a home <laughs> and be able to be privileged enough to travel and go do things like some people are actually nomadic and don't have a home, which is, you know, kind of a different thing. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're blessed to have the privilege to to go see things and see the world and see different states and everything. So like that's kind of where it came from. It was just like, you know, bouncing ideas off of other people and going back and forth. Sometimes like I'm not going to lie. People just drop gems like, you know, like everything for me, everything is kind of like a lesson or a little step forward. So it's like it's easy to pick up the gems that you see or polish gems with somebody else when you already have an open mindset and they already have an open mindset and you have a like mindedness, like minded goal in the end. There's just like, you know, no ceilings. People say that 10 people can change a country, like 10 like minded individuals can change a country. I believe in that, too. Yeah, if you can put a group of people who have the same goal in mind, you guys can accomplish anything because you got different people who have different talents, who can take on different avenues and support different part of the businesses. Thanks. You found someone who can make art, but doesn't have the specific resources right now for the art to be shown. Thanks. And you were able to provide an opportunity for the art to be shown. And she was able to provide the artwork. The content, and, yeah. yeah. And you guys, you know, are able to come together and piece this together to, you know, be a really good business. That's what separates a strong brand from an average brand. For me, I don't really view Nomadic as like a business. Honestly, that's probably a shortcoming in some ways, in some ways not. It's an experience. It's the journey. I'm not really thinking about the payouts or the business or obviously, you know, I'm doing the business thing. I'm keeping mm -hmm. track, all that shit, but like, I'm not worried about like what comes after, you know, I'm mm -hmm. worried about right now, like what we're doing next. Mm -hmm. When you are creating your brand and you want your brand to stand out, you need to identify what does your brand have that others don't what can you offer that others don't hone in on that and develop it yeah. and then market it just be consistent get personal with your audience make your brand evoke some type of emotion yeah i think that like again i'm just starting so this isn't from like a, a standpoint of like super successful rich as and like not nah, but mm -hmm. like from the standpoint of a viewer and a creator at the same time i don't like seeing things that are kind of forced you know, I don't like seeing things that are also on the other side of the spectrum, like overly complex or complicated or trying to do too much. I think that right now having music and a brand is kind of trendy. It's easy to get caught in the trends. It's easy to get caught in, you know, the outcome or the possibles or the hypotheticals, you know. It's hard to enjoy what you do. Like nowadays, it's hard to sit down and like have like a constructive session drawing sketches without thinking about what if someone doesn't buy this shit? When I first started, it wasn't like I'm trying to get rich. Like I'm going to put this amount of money in, I'm going to get this much out. It was more so like, how do I get my music to a spot where people can enjoy it versus I'm the only one enjoying it or my friends are putting in hours of work, making me sound raw, listening to me like rap, 
supporting me, but how do I, you know, give them a tangible result? And honestly, in my opinion, like just dropping shit on Spotify and Apple Music is not it. It's an amazing first start. I think a lot of people don't even get there, but I want more, you know? So the next step is for me, like videos, like these songs are mostly direct inspiration for my life or direct fantasies that I have about what I want my life to be. If I make a video, I want it to kind of reflect that storytelling aspect, that aspect of this is the content I make, this is who I am, but also like this is what I'm presenting. So I think that like the clothing brand in tandem with the videos is going to help my music in the long run. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to help form a culture. It's going to help, you know what I'm saying, spread the vision. Like at this point, like I view like people's bodies now is the advertisement. Like if I make like cold ass pair of bell bottoms and like I got all like the finest people not even the finest people, like objectively fine. I don't give a fuck. But like, if you are confident, you're sexy. If I get other confident people to wear my shit, then it's like, all right, now that's a, a ripple effect. Like if Jameis sees me on the street rocking an NMDC hoodie, you know what I'm saying? We out at the bars or whatever. He bumped into me and looked at me like, yo, where you get that great hoodie from, Brody? Like I, I ain't never seen some shit like that before. And it's like, ah, plug myself. I mean, I guess the situation wouldn't be, it's my brand, but another beautiful person plugs another beautiful person. It's a ripple effect. Like now it's like, okay, I'm getting support from areas of two different avenues. Like I feel like being an artist nowadays, mm -hmm. you can't just have one avenue because there's so many people who do everything. There's a top one, 5%, I'm maybe 10% of artists that are successful that like fucking make their own videos. They direct, I want to say make their own videos, direct script, screen, like you have all the cast. On top of that, like you making beats, you engineering your stuff, you rapping on it, singing on it. Like there are people who do literally Everything musically, business, visually, that's hard. <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. Like you, I, if you do that, I respect you. Keep doing it. But also as a hyper independent person, ask for help. Because <laughs> you're yeah. you, you making us all look bad, man. Yeah, ask, for, team. ask for help, man. You can't just do everything. But I mean, if yeah. you can, power to it, you know. Yeah, because you always got resources, people that's willing to come help you. And yeah. a business is not profitable right away. Being an artist, you're not going to be profitable right Hell away. No. You're going to have many trials and tribulations um, throughout the process. But mm -hmm. life is about balance. You need to figure out what is most important to you now yeah. and prioritize your goals. You know, create a schedule and, you know, manage your time. Time management is very important Super. because you got 24 hours in your day. And if you're spending four hours on TikTok, you're doing something wrong with your life. Oh, bro. You shouldn't be binge watching all my YouTube videos in one day. I'm, <laughs> maybe you should. Maybe you should actually. Know, I, you know, maybe you should just to get your mindset Especially, right. Just maintain a balance between your work and personal life so you don't get burnt out and fall in love with the process, man. Everything is balanced. Everything is back and forth. With a brand especially, you can't just expect to get rich off this shit. Like, you know, nah. some people get lucky. Like, I'm not going to lie. Not even get lucky. Like, some people do it right. Like, you can do shit the right way and see the rewards like immediately the initial startup is not the hard part like i feel like beginner's luck is definitely everyone's gonna buy clothes everyone's looking for the next trend and whatever like you could have the next you could really easily come up with the next thing that's like oh my goodness like people resonate with you like that immediately yeah. but it's a balance you know what i mean it's like you can't just dump all you know your ideas into one thing and then expect to have that same consistency like there's a balance of preparing executing and then also as an artist, like you got to, again, multiple avenues is a balance of creating, planning, presenting, really underrated, but resting, like <laughs> take a second to step away from the mic or step away from the machine. When we first started this brand, I feel like me and Sax, like overly, overly stressed, like the production, you know, I'm an ambitious dude, like I'm an obsessive dude. So it's like, you know, I push things forward, like relentlessly, not super unhealthy for like. I mean, shit, relationships with yourself, with your peers, relationships with your brand, with your art. Like, it, it, don't put too much stress on, motherfuckers gotta rest. Motherfuckers gotta have yeah. a balance of neutral thinking because you get you get decision fatigue. Like, you get social battery fatigue. Like, everything is maintaining a balance, a yin and yang, a back and forth. Like, yep. you can't just expect everything to be go, go, go without a, all right, hold on, let me take a breath. And you can't just be lethargic and allow things to just exist without putting some sort of care and attention into it. Someone can hop on, make a song. It could be one of their first songs and it could blow up and yeah. start a career for them. Or you can make songs for five, six years and it just doesn't blow up. Yeah. But success can come at any time. Be patient, be consistent, study. Study your craft, study yeah. the market that you're in because there's a lot of people who become millionaires off stocks or millionaires off of YouTube but that's because they knew the curve that was coming and they prepared for the curve. They know the market. You need to know the market that you're in because if you know the market that you're in, you're going to be ready for anything. You're going to be ready yeah. for the downfall or the change because everything's constantly changing. So yeah. you can't be successful on YouTube using 2020 YouTube 
techniques. Yeah. You need to know what's happening right now. I think that's important to do your research for sure. Mm -hmm. And I think um, to get to the level that Jamie's talking about, like you have to be adaptive and you have to also execute. Like don't procrastinate, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Like a lot of this advice, like I'm kind of saying to myself as well. <laughs> like these are things that yeah. like, I've acknowledged as shortcomings, like within like, you know, collective circles that I've witnessed and I've experienced personally. So I think that again, this balance comes with preparation and execution. And also like a factor that, you know, to know your market, you need to adapt. Like once you're doing shit, regardless of what it is, regardless of you're selling anything, regardless of you're just doing shit, like everything don't gotta be about money, you know? But like whatever you're doing, you're not gonna get better unless you do it. You can watch Kobe film all day, but if you don't put the ball to the to the to the ground, like you're not gonna have handles better than fucking anybody. Like you gonna no, be not. out there dribbling like I don't even know. Jalen Brown in the playoffs. Damn, you bogus. <laughs> Everyone saw that. I was going to name a big man, but big men nowadays can hoop. Like, niggas that are seven feet tall are dribbling, so I can't even say that shit. Like, get in the gym, bro. Mm -hmm. Get in the fucking gym, nigga. <laughs> no matter what it is, get in the gym, nigga. Like, whatever your gym is, like, whether it's a mic or, again, a broider machine or whatever the fuck it is. Like, just, again, the theme in all these videos is going to be just do it. Just yeah, do it. Fast. Just do it. We struggle to find the balance between, you know, our dreams and our visions, especially if we're content creators or artists and it's not specifically profitable right away. How do we navigate the challenges of pursuing our passion while also meeting our practical needs about financial stability? How do we make money, but also dedicate time to developing our craft? You gotta, uh, however you get in right now, bro, keep getting it like that. You got a job right now that restricts your creativity. Like, bro, I worked in a factory for like three months. I was creative, but I'm not gonna lie, I was exhausted. I did not have the time to really do what the fuck I wanted. Mm -hmm. As soon as I was not working there anymore, niggas got fired. I'm gonna just say that. Fuck them. As soon as I got fired, bro, my life got way fucking better. Like, it, I just like that free time, that threshold of not having to worry about like learning a new culture, a new environment. Like, once I got that free time, I, I put myself in position to get a job where I can you know, not be so stressed, not be so strained. I can get off work and still like put in work on my website mm -hmm. or like I can put in work on a song. Like I'm also in environments where I can sing. Like bro, mm -hmm. being in a factory, I couldn't sing. It was loud as fuck. If you're a music artist and you in a, in a space that you can't be inspired, you're doing yourself an injustice. You can't just make yeah. music off of something that's like, this is not conventional. You know what I'm saying? Like it's becoming more conventional with social media and with like, you know, we're kind of like beginning this renaissance, getting out of this, you know, that 2020 bullshit. We don't even got to talk about that. That's a different topic for another day. But like coming out of that age of like you've been in the crib no shows the world is kind of trying to get artists back in the real world like the digital era is kind of taken away from like the live shows and the community events and all that shit so it's like nowadays is you know kind of shifting back to let's create you know what i'm saying in a space where that's public let's perform mm -hmm. in you know shows group settings like the thing that made artists profitable before was the shows so nowadays like you can't really rely on the streams like you got to make money elsewhere you got to find your avenue elsewhere and then like get into those in-person situations those group situations way more often put yourself out there not just socially, not just on media, because like mm -hmm. the media, you know, essentially is fake. But like you go out there and make an impression on a person, a good impression, they're gonna remember that shit for at least the rest of the week, at least the rest of the day. You hope for the rest of the week, rest of the month. Like, and that's where you kind of, the consistency comes in. Yeah. Like you go to a show, like I bring my boy to a show, you know what I'm saying? He might record me or something. The people that I meet there, I make that impression. Then outside of that, like now I have the social media impressions from the video that my homie helped me with. So it's like, if you want to make money off of your art, you got to stay relevant. And that's like the hardest part. Like I'm saying this and I'm the nigga who deletes Instagram. Instagram every few months like it's hard to balance the two you know again everything's about balance yin yang mm -hmm. it's hard to balance like a profitable life outside of like your hobbies and then try to cultivate a culture of like being professional with your hobbies especially when you're in a system that doesn't really want you to be creative like for instance for me that was the factory that shit was fucking stupid also in the age that we're in social media kind of takes away from that in-person impressions yeah, but also social media is so saturated the stuff we see on social media i see artists on social media yeah i'll listen to the 30 second clip but no i won't click into their profile no i don't have any type of emotional connection to them as opposed to someone who i meet in person and see in a live show yeah. or have a real conversation with there are a lot of avenues that as humans like we have been neglecting just as an artist it's hard to see like you know things like pop-up events mm -hmm. or like open mics as opportunities to connect with people nowadays because people just be on their phones like you got to realize though that if you want to make again 
profits on your brand or profits on your hobbies and turn your hobbies into professions like the shit that you like doing you gotta wholeheartedly be about that shit and like when i say wholeheartedly be about that shit like you gotta spend your life spend the time in your week presenting performing like whether that be again pop-up shops or like uh, open mics or you know what i'm saying scheduled shows like you gotta go out there and actually do that if you want it to be a brand you know what i'm saying again this is this is one of the things i'm telling myself too also because <laughs> it's hard doing that like it's not something easy isn't it like it's way easier said than done mm -hmm. a lot of that shit is connection based and i'm not gonna lie like i can talk but like talking to people is exhausting so i get it like motherfuckers do not be wanting to put themselves out there with the wrong crowd like that's scary one of my homies like he got into the wrong crowd. Like, he was getting shows, right? He was getting paid. But, you know, later down the line, they started putting him in situations that's dangerous, illegal. Like, scamming is real. Like, that shit, especially after, again, 2020, the dark ages, like, scamming is so crazy real. Like, nigga, everyone is scamming. It's easy to discard, like discredit, like, live opportunities. It's easy to hear, like, yo, I got a show. Slide on me in the city, blah, blah, blah. Like, and, bro, I live an hour from the city. Like, I'm not finna slide for no bogus. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> niggas yeah. will always try to invalidate something, you know? So it's like, like my homie had a great idea, like try to get somebody random just to model our shit just off the street, just try to, you know what I'm saying? Give them the garment, just take pictures of them, get their socials and just let them keep pushing. Cause it's like, first of all, I made an impression with this person. Not only that, I just got content and now I just also got a new advertisement, like some, this beautiful male or female, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Gender specific, this beautiful fan just mm -hmm. walked away with my garment on their body. Like it's shit like that. Linking up with artists like, yo, from the slide to the show, bro, you trying to slide with me? Open mic. On Tuesdays, every so and so a month, like, yeah, I slide with you, bro. Like, that's, you know, that's really what music should be. I feel like, again, it's like a sport, it's collaboration. It's like yeah. you need competition, you need like a group with you because it's the people around you that's going to propel you forward. And yeah, when you're creating that brand, be personal, get personal, know your audience, and establish that relationship with your audience because they're going to be who's supporting you on this path. They're your real team, your audience, man. So stay strong with your audience, you know, keep pushing, man. Yeah, it all starts with self. Like, I feel like in this day and age, like, we support things that are organic, mm -hmm. we support things that are genuine. Like, that's you know, in part why I feel like we fucking with each other in general is because we're both like, we're trying to do something that represents us in a good way. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily based off of a trend. Inspired, like, I'm not going to, everyone's inspired by trends. Like, I'm not trying to say like, oh, we're different as shit. Uh, two niggas doing the same thing as most people. But it's like, I think that being organic in the way that you present yourself or like genuinely committing to mm -hmm. your journey and your ideas, mm -hmm. like, that's how you garner support. I think that slowly with time, like, that sort of thing kind of snowballs you know like if your foundation starts as i'm just a dude you know trying to make my hobbies into a dream like that's relatable you know i think there's obviously more to it i'm really simplifying like all of this being organic is like a good starting point you know and i think that making money takes a lot of time and dedication um pacing yourself is important not thinking too hard about the product or the reaction is super important like when i think of shit like this i think of like the founding fathers of social media <laughs> 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 fucking like supreme dreams and like you funny b and drummer niles and like video like the nigga who put the peace sign up and used to disappear <laughs> they were doing weird ass shit like spastic ass adhd ass weird shit <laughs> And I respect it so heavy. I love all of them. Like, I still follow them. I followed them when I was in middle school, bro. So it's like the fact that, you know, I witnessed them stay consistent since I was goddamn 13 years old. And now 10 years later, they're finally like in rooms with like motherfuckers like Meek Mill, J. Cole. Like, I yeah. know that drummer now, like Leaning Cuisine, like, you know, let me tell you something. I do like he making like damn near movies now. Like, that's fucking cool. Motherfuckers like Key and Peel, like those skits and everything was just like. You know, this is funny in conversation. I see little clips of this shit. It's funny. But now, like, motherfuckers are actually directing movies. Like, that is insane. Like, they're pivotal parts of the culture. Like, Childish Gambino, bro, his name started as a name generator. He was an artist that had the resources that just made, like, whatever the fuck he wanted, bro. He rapping about thick Asian bitches. This whole time, Gambino <laughs> don't even be on that, really. Like, Gambino's an artist. You know, he yeah. presented himself like that. Like, his image was so genuine, so fun, that, like, because the internet became something way different like now my boys you know guava island with rihanna boom what the hell like <laughs> fast forward now he's making i don't even that shit with redbone and me me your mama like that album changed cultures now he making songs with 21 savage like making videos that got a hundred millions like mm -hmm. gambino was not that he was soundcloud rapper half tied thicky y'all see you want to do is bangkok now it's like bro i'm listening to this shit like this was a different man. That's kind of the progression that I'm hoping to see in my art and my right. peers' art too. It's like I'm 19 mm -hmm. making a song rapping about getting butterflies from a curly hair shorty. <laughs> three, like three, four years ago. It's like the shit that I'm rapping about now is like, bro, I'm grieving over shit. 
Like I've done fallen in love. I done fallen out of love. Like me as a 19 year old did not experience those emotions. Like, and I know that's kind of like still early 20s young folk shit, but it's like at the same time, like me and seven years as a 30 year old like i'm gonna be rapping about shit way different yeah i know niggas gonna be like you gonna be 30 and rapping like yes bro i love this shit this is all i do <laughs> like i'm gonna be i'm just gonna, gonna develop day by day keep getting better man um, bro, i'm gonna be making music till i'm literally uh, incapable to hold the mic in my hands that progression is is everything it's everything I, see look i got so deep in this i forgot the question again bro, do these do these cough drops have like a, a, a something in the middle no not these these shits is good <laughs> <laughs> Hey, ladies and gentlemen, today we, we talked about some great subjects. We got another podcast coming out with VO soon. If you haven't tuned in to any of the past podcasts we just released, you guys need to check them out. The man control your life. We're out. Yo.